So I'm um, excited to talk to all of you about um, what we're doing at uh, Capital One and um, and intersourcing. We are working to try to scale it across the enterprise. And, and we're defining intersourcing, I'm sure, the way most of you are, I hope, um, which is applying open source practices and principles to proprietary software. Um, actually, I would love to hear from others at the end if they're facing sort of the same um, challenges that I'm going to cover in this um, presentation. A quick introduction. Um, I've been with Capital One since 2011 and have led uh, projects and portfolios in a variety of our lines of business and including our enterprise teams. This year, I started managing our intersource program and really formalizing an intersource program. Um, I, I just have to say I love this role. Um, it's been a culmination of a career of sort of herding cats and helping people reach their potential. Um, using sales and process and consulting type skills is, is how I sort of approached this role, um, and I and I've I just have to say I've I've really enjoyed it, um, and getting to know all of the folks in Intersource Commons. Let me um, just talk a little bit about uh, Capital One. So we are um, a U.S. based bank with some international presence. We are still founder led. Um, and we have, among other, uh, among other things, we have our credit card, our auto finance, and our retail banking products. And we are on a journey to, to change banking um, and really disrupt you know, how, how banks have been thought of for a lot of years. And, and one of the ways we've done that is our tech transformation, which I won't go into in any sort of detail. But um, it, it, we, we approach things sort of for the long haul. Tech transformation was one of them. And we see intersourcing as, you know, it's not going to be a quick journey. It's going to take us a while. Um, in around 2015, as part of our tech transformation overall, we did make a declaration of open source first, meaning, you know, using open source as viable solutions and making commitments to open source communities. So we do sponsor a number of foundations um, to help keep open source sustainable, where we, you know, where we can do our part. We've released uh, more than 40 open source projects, and, and we've put quite an investment into building and governing open source at the company. I think starting with this year is where we've really started to also put some focus on intersourcing, starting with 2024. And why, I think, is probably, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but um, we recognize that, um, you know, applying these open source principles to proprietary software, you know, makes sense. So the increased innovation through more diversity of thought, the uh, improved code quality with more eyes on it. Um, we do have stories that, have emerged around the company around you know delivering in fewer sprints because of expertise that contributors can provide. Um, we've got some examples that are also emerging of you know where um, developer costs are are going down because we use intersourcing and and more instances of reuse over sort of reinvent. So I love that Joe said the flywheel because that's really kind of an approach we're taking on scaling intersourcing is using the notion of a flywheel. So a flywheel, like a company culture, has a reserve of sort of available power. So how do we tap into that? Rather than seeing culture as a hurdle, you know, how do we tap into the power of culture? And, um, and the flywheel effect from Jim Collins, Good to Great, was around really creating the small wins that accumulate and create the momentum that deliver the compounding benefits. Uh, so we want our developers to um, experience intersourcing, um, get involved with it, and then tell their friends and they tell two friends, et cetera. Um, now, overcoming, there are definitely some hurdles, as I, I, I would assume most of you are aware, um, and getting to the tipping point where this becomes sort of self-reinforcing and has momentum is really the key. Um, and so some of the challenges, we, so on the left-hand side, you see OS practices, you know, we want to scale and benefit from. Um, and we, we, we have some of these are farther along than others. So, you know, from a code transparency perspective, we do use GitHub, which goes a long way in helping with transparency. Um, we know we need robust do documentation and consistent documentation everywhere. 
there are um, teams, there are engagement models that, that we need teams to set up that they haven't used before. Uh, we need to get religious, really, about roadmaps and backlogs and publishing those. Um, it is a mindset shift to be um, completely community-driven and, and putting everything out in the open sort of as a default. Um, and so on the hurdle side, again, probably not a surprise to folks, um, we are working in sort of each of these areas to see where we can where we can create the small wins and the momentum, and I'll talk about those. So, from a culture perspective, we've been really focused on who are who are our developers, and we've got lots of them that already open source and have that experience, and they're passionate about intersource, um, and we are leveraging those folks to help. Uh, sort of market and share their experience and share the knowledge about intersourcing. Um, we developed, we we launched actually an, uh, uh, the intersource ambassadors uh, program in Q4 um, that we want to that we want to grow. From a tooling perspective, we built a, a intersource marketplace. We realized. Um, Capital One really did try to get into Intersource a few years ago in earnest, but one of the things we learned from that experience was that we really needed sort of a foundational um, tool that could present sort of dem demand and supply for Intersourcing. It also, this marketplace also helps us track leaderboards and recognition and metrics around Intersourcing. And we, we are working to connect it to our performance management system. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, process consulting. So as as was mentioned I, in the prior presentation around helping people um, get ready for intersourcing and how do they set things up for that. And the last area around motivation um, is we're really specifically trying to focus on the conversations that developers and their managers uh, have and making that connection of intersourcing being able to help with influence and network and new skills and new product learning um, and connect that with their development plan conversations that they have. What we're seeing is the wheel is starting to turn. Um, and since intersourcing can go in just so many directions and a lot of places where we could have started, what we did focused on first this year was really the basics of how many contributors do we have and how many code bases do we have open on this inner source por portal that was created. Um, we started with what we thought were sort of reasonable targets. We've gotten more aggressive as our in our targets as we've as we've learned along the way. Um, we were also learning sort of what can we measure along the way. Um, but you can see, I mean, our story really is just beginning, but we know that Capital One is sort of used to getting into things for the long haul. Um, so I'm excited to see sort of how this story continues to unfold. And the last I will say, just in summary, um, just to leave, leave you with three ideas that, and again, this may be something you're all, all know well uh, but you know there's no silver bullet i mean if you know of one you know i would love to i would love to talk with you um it, it's taking testing and learning and trying things to see you know how to get that momentum we did see momentum just you know in the first few months um, and i think that's because it really the second bullet is committing to sort of what we were going to measure and drive keep it simple we picked one angle um, we can change it as we go um, that helped us get some initial momentum. And then tooling and communication really are foundational, um, we've realized, you know, in terms of getting started. So that, I feel like I went through that really fast, but I, if anybody has any questions, I will entertain them.